So welcome everyone to a talk where we are going to t discuss a very interesting topic on managing trust anchors in a cloud native environment. And kind of going back, a little bit back to the future, right? We'll look into how trust anchor has been managed historically and how we can do better in a cloud native environment. But hi everyone, my name is Eli Nesterov and uh, such a pleasure to present here. I, I still remember like our very first KubeCon that I attended in San Francisco like many, many years ago and it's like very small. So it's always good to get back on stage and talk about some cool stuff that's happening here. Um, so I've been a long time as a community. I happen to run one of their world largest deployment of Spire, scaled beyond million nodes. And uh, in 2020, I don't know, a few months through the pandemic, we've been writing a book about this kind of infinite regress problems in security and how Spiffy and Spire helps to solve them. Uh, the book called Solving the Bottom Turtle. So if you want to read it, it's completely free. Uh, you go to spiffy.io slash book, and you can get an awesome PDF in there. And I'm also a co-founder and CTO of a company called Spiral, where we build in workload identity platform based on Spiffy <laughs> specification. So getting back to 2020, I've been thinking about like the trust and I kind of get to this idea of uh, identity trust paradox or we're just starting with very interesting observation of like we as a human beings usually tend to grow trust between each other over time. Uh, and surprisingly or not surprisingly, there's lots of different researches, how it's happening. But in many cases, the trust like between human beings started on some kind of maybe close to zero, maybe higher, depends on reputation and other things. But over time, it usually tends to go up, up north and east. Very different researches related how it's the trust erosion between human beings happening. But I found it's interesting that in digital world, it's a little bit an opposite, right? So uh, if you think about, hey, here's my server, and I stand it up today, and I connected it to internet, but in a year, you probably will trust this server less than today if you didn't touch it because you didn't do any software updates in there. And if it's been connected to internet, probably someone find a vulnerability already on it, right? So there is kind of idea of erosion of trust over time in uh, digital world. And the same, same related to digital identities, right? We used to issue certificates for our Rob servers for like a three years and for two years and for one year, but it was like a few of them and we manually put a private keys in there, but you still kind of, over time, you have a less trust in these certificates and a private key, because if someone, if someone compromised that server, maybe they already own the private key, right? So we get to, I don't know, if you use a Let's Encrypt these days, tissue certificates for 90 days, so you kind of, your trust go in this up and down to these digital identities over time, and I found it's very, very interesting and compared to like how we human beings trust each other. So we're gonna talk more today about managing trust in a cloud native world because we don't have like a single server instance. Now we have like a bunch of, uh, bunch of containers, pods and everything, or virtual machines running everywhere. And uh, yeah, I'll start by looking into how browser and operation system manage their uh, trust anchors and what it actually means, a trust anchor. But at the end of the day, in uh, digital systems, you're managing, managing trust, it boils down to managing a trust anchors. So what is a trust anchor? And RFC, 5914 defines it as a, an authoritative entity represented by a public key and associated data, right? So there's a public key and some metadata about it, but usually you have more than one trust anchor 
in your system, and often it calls like trust store. Uh, and you can think about it as just basically a list of uh, trust anchors or public keys. So the probably most popular trust anchor list is called the PKI, right? It contains, I don't know what's a, how many entities there are, but I, I, I've seen recently, I think Ryan Hurst tweeted that's 85 trust, well, PKI trust anchors cover 99% of all the certificates issued on the internet. Um, I don't know how long the list in your browser, but you can probably open up. Um, depends on your operation system. Or if you use uh, Mozilla Firefox, it has its own built uh, trust store. So this is probably the only browser, at least like from most popular that I know that support its own trust anchor store that is completely independent from operation system. But the rest of the browsers, like if you use Chrome or Safari or Microsoft Internet Explorer, they will be using trust anchors that's managed by your operation system, right? So they don't have their own. And trust anchors have like really, this trust store has an interest in property because users can add or remove the trust anchors in there as well. We need a way for them to manage it. Uh, so most of the browsers rely on operation system and so which operation system has its own? This is like example of how Mac OS look like. And as I mentioned, users can add or delete trust anchors in there. Uh, one of examples could be your like private company, CA. But what if this, well, PKI, one of this, I don't know, let's encrypt them or get compromised, how, how you all know about it. You'll probably get an operation, your operation system update with their, this trust anchor removed there. So if you go to, I don't know, Mac OS has a list on their website where they publish a list of trust anchors that's delivered with an operation system. You can find the same on your, somewhere in, user slash library, there is also HTML file with all the trust anchors, that's your version of macOS support, like we see all your added trust anchors in there, so you can compare and find maybe it's the same or it's different, maybe someone else, someone put something that should not be in there. And I found it, found it interesting that Windows also have disallowed certificate list, so it's kinda, they have a model of a low list and a block list as well internally. Um, but there is also Linux and different distributions have their own idea of where the trust anchors, well, PKI trust anchors should be stored. In most of the cases, like any open SSL based software, we'll be looking into EDC SSL certs so this is where, where most of the trust anchors will be stored. And uh, I think Red Hat has its own view of this, and here's a pass of for basically CA bundle where every trust anchor um, on that type of system is stored. So in order to get your trust tankers on Linux, you need to install CA-certificates package. This is like update of this package will deliver basically new CA certificates in there. And because most of the containers based on Linux distribution, so basically this is the same way how you get your trust tankers in there. And if you, I don't know, if you use a, some curl container and it usually comes with CA certificates package pre-installed so you can go, I don't know, do a curl google.com and you won't get an any error, error in that case. And, oh, that was loud. <laughs> yeah, so you, 
you can see in a Docker files this line where you do run add CA certificate package where you do, I don't know, uh, install of it uh, to get all your trust anchors. But some of their container distributions, like a distroless, for instance, doesn't come as a package system, so we need to copy their whole directory um, in there for your software. And it depends if your software is using OpenSSL underneath or something else, like an Ant Mozilla NSS. That's what we'll be looking into different location. Right, so this is about web PKI, but how do you deal with your company private PKI, right? So I don't know, we have uh, our own version of Jira or a GitHub running internally, and obviously we want it to be covered by TLS, but we want to use our company private CA. So now how do you distribute this root of trust among all the machines or that users have to connect, or if you have your production or DAF or staging environment that needs to use this web PKI. How, how do you distribute this trust anchor now? And there's different systems that's built over time. Maybe you also want to use like client certificate authentication for users that's connected to Jira or to, I don't know, any internal system. So there is like for distributing private root of trust among their user machines, like a desktop, there are systems like an MDM, or I know for users there is a different certificate enrollment protocol that's been built over time. But there is also a need like, hey, I'm building a Java application and it needs, it's like, it's also need to trust my company private PKI, so how do I do this? I need to add it to Java Key Store, which is also the fun process to do, and if you build in something, I don't know, very exotic, like a software that's using Mozilla stack underneath, uh, it will be using an NSS component that stands for, I think, Network Security Services that basically comes with its own uh, trust anchor store, and you need a way to find, to find a way to add your privacy in there. So this is like in general, but what do you do with the containers, and I slightly mentioned this, this you see this kind of line of adding CA certificates packages, right? Uh, so this is what you do in most of the cases. An example is like if you're using um, Alpine, you'll do something like APK at CA certificates. But for your company private CA, during CI process, you need to modify your Docker files, and I have some example later, uh, to copy your company trust bundle into the container, and then you need to run updates, a certificates command, so to propagate it. So you have like multi-stage process of adding it there during your CI system. And I found it interesting, um, and Dan Loren wrote this kind of simple uh, utility called insert. You can just run it, and you can point into your company trust bundle. It'll just download the container image, and it add this bundle inside the trust anchor store internally. And it can also push this updated container back. So in most of the cases, that's what you need. But with Java, you need like a separate process that build the Java key store file, and then you need to copy it inside a container as well. So this is like how you do it during uh, your normal CI process. So here's a quick example for Alpine, right? So you add in your well, PKI trust bundle and a third line, add in your custom CA. This might be your co company private certificate authority, and then it's basically adding another command to add it. Um, so this is what you do during CI, but CI process is like propagate very slow, right? So it's like how you can, another option to do this is to do during runtime. And how you can, for containers, add 
the trust bundles. And one of the easiest solution could be you just do volume mount. So you can do volume mount for containers that's running just like on a node. Or if you're running on a container on Kubernetes cluster, you can do mount through CSI driver as well. So just mount the whole volume with all the trust anchors as you need to have in your, in your system. But it's still kind of, you, you need to invent this machinery, you need to build this machinery, like how this bundle will be delivered through, which means through like, I don't know, your config management system or through GitOps, whatever process you're following. There is also a way to, uh, for Kubernetes, to use a CSI driver that will mount this volume automatically. And there is an interesting project from Jetstack called Trust Manager that's basically automated this, all this process for you. I didn't use it. Uh, yeah, it's still kind of, it's still in development, but it's showing this kind of promising step of automation toward you don't need to reinvent the wheel, basically. Uh, Another option is to, I know it's interesting, and there's a screenshot and in the slides later, there'll be a link to the article from a small step where they basically suggest in a solution where you, your container use this init script to download the trust bundle from, trust anchors from some endpoint uh, that's you presumably control, and there is some additional checks to do it. I, I just found it interesting and add it in here so we can check it out later. But in general, how much you should worry about managing your web PKI trust anchor, how, how much you care, right? Because probably the, you need them in your container only if you're software is talking to some endpoint that protected by the PKI, right? So instead of like, hey, here's like Slack, and today their API is using, I don't know, I don't know what they're using, but let's say Let's Encrypt, and you are adding only Let's Encrypt trust anchors into your, uh, into your container, you, tomorrow if they move to, I don't know, Cloudflare, you'll need to update again your certificate. So instead of you just add everything, like all the, the whole web PKI. But do you really need to worry about if something of the certificates in web PKI get compromised or expired because how, like what is the potential mechanism of exploitation in this case? And, and the only one I can think about is like, if there is a man in the middle attack on these containers, but it's also need, it feels, it's also need to be a very targeted attack, right? So you know that I'm talking to some API and that API is protected using some CA and that CA is compromised. And in this case, I can just do some man in the middle. So it's like, it feels like very complicated uh, and not very opportunistic attack. But there is also a vector of I found a way to compromise CI system and I put my, I know that this directory is using to build a trust tankers in my golden image, right? That's all, after that's used by the whole CI system to build everything. So if I find a way to sneak something in there, then it means I can do man in the middle like on everything in, think about it like SolarWinds potential attack type of thing. So it depends. Um, and I found another interesting utility that basically can scan your, any of your container image and it will show you all their expired certificates. In it, it using, um, combination of, I think, Mozilla, uh, NSS, list, and something else to verify against. I, I wanted to show the screenshot with their Nginx, Nginx latest, but it was like, I don't know, 20 or 30 expired certificates, so I ran it against um, 
chain guard curl. And it still has like a five expired certificates because of a downstream dependencies, right? So it's using Alpine and Alpine using Mozilla NSS list. So instead of like using directly Mozilla NSS, there is some lag, right? So and this is why it's in many cases important to know your know your dependencies for all your images because as I mentioned, at the end of the day, most of their most of the Linux distribution rely on Mozilla NSS list. Uh, but the speed of propagation of these updates is different for different distributions. So it's like your Debian and Alpine speed of getting updates from Mozilla NSS list will be like very, very different. And maybe you want to do this directly because it's just like a one file in Mozilla directory that contains the whole list of trust. Um, Another known database, I think it's a Mozilla, Microsoft, and uh, Google built a database of a trust tankers for the internet, but it's, I don't know, I spent 15 or 20 minutes looking into it. There are like a list of all the trust tankers. You can query it, but you can get a, get a list like from Mozilla. It's much harder. So, all this kind of talking about dependency is basically to lead to um, thought on what if tomorrow one of certificates or private keys for them get compromised? Like, do you know how long it will take for your company to update all these images that's used in there? Um, I have no idea. And usually the speed of updating this through CI system takes long time to propagate. So you need to rebuild all these images. You need to rebuild your gold images or gold images, then the rest of the dependencies. And then you need to update everything at a runtime, like anything that's like running on my, I don't know, Kubernetes clusters in production. And if you are working in a large enough organization, the release cycles could take, I don't know, weeks, sometimes months to propagate this. So it's very slow. And how we can do it better? There is uh, probably half an answer for this. I don't have like, hey, here is a solution. But Spiffy solving not only workload identity problem, right, but it's also solving uh, trust bundle and trust anchors propagation, but specifically for a SPIFI. So what, what is a SPIFI? And SPIFI stands for Secure Production Identity Framework for Everyone. There's a specification, uh, and it's like one of their CNCF graduated projects. It's basically standard that describe what is identity, what is the format of it. Uh, what is a SPIFI ID? And SPIFI ID is basically a URI like string that goes into SPIFI verifiable identity document, which is basically X509 certificate or dot token. And the biggest part of the specification is a workload API. And workload API is a not local Unix domain socket, which any workload can talk to who understand work, how to talk to workload API. And when I talk to workload API, it can get multiple things like its own identity, it can get a trust bundle that define what this workload should be trusting in this environment. And it's all very kind of end-to-end automated. Uh, so Spire is like one of SPIFI implementation. This is an open source implementation. And in general, any SPIF implementation consists of two things. There is a server and there is an agent. An agent is the one that ex basically providing this Unix domain socket with workload API. Uh, in SPIF world, workloads doesn't ask for specific identity. They just literally ask for the identity. Hey, give me identity. I don't know who am I. Uh, and then it can use it to talk to other workloads. And a bundle is a part that basically helps to manage this trust. So I'll show a quick demo. I have this 
a simple SPIF implementation. It's basically take these two parts of agent and the server, and it's kind of one binary. It exposes this Unix workload API. And uh, my workload is a backend. It's talked to this workload API, and it will get an identity. And I'll use a browser as a front end to show what the, what, what the identity is. And so first I'll show what the, what the spiffy um, and how this identity will look like, and then I'll show another, another quick thing, how you can use this workload API not only to distribute spiffy trust bundle, but how you can extend it to distribute, I don't know, your company uh, root CA certificates. So I have this. Thing that's called the Spiffy CLI, and we're gonna run it, and it uses this configuration file, which I don't want to explain and go into details. But the most important part is like, hey, we have this supplemental bundle path that has multiple certificates. So it has like a three certificates in it. And so now we have this Spiffy server and agent running and our workload will be this demo application that's front end listening on a local host. So if you go here, we can see what is a uh, Spiffy JOTS with look like. So remember I talked about the Spiffy URI, so that is how it looked like for the JOTS with. And we can show their X509 suite, which is just basically X509 certificate, and it has this Sun URI thing with exactly the same string. So this is like the string that can be used for your authorization systems beyond an authentication. And this thing's called the Spiffy Trust Bundle, which has digital certificates as well for this trust, Spiffy Trust domain. And this is an extension that I added. So there's like three certificates here they just basically, this is human readable view of them. So we have this Acme Corp, say one, two, and three. And what I wanna do now is I have this another file that's called bundle short. And it's only half like a two cert, CA certificates. And what, what I wanna show is like, okay, let's say this certificates get compromised, so we want to update our bundle distribution, and it will, at a runtime, propagate it pretty quickly everywhere. So I'll just need to change the configuration here to point to this short bundle instead on a server side. I, I was lazy for a demo, so I, I, I do not watch the changes on this file, so I'll just quickly restart the server. But now if we request, backend will request workload API, hey, give me the supplemental bundle, it will have a two certificate. So it's like, it's basically, if you have a fleet of machines, it will propagate everywhere pretty quickly. So that's it for Am I running out of time? Okay, so quick takeaway to wrap it up quickly. So uh, if you build in CI system, build your golden image and propagate it and uh, automate everything, uh, ideally in a runtime and use Spiffy and you can even extend Spiffy to propagate your images very fast. Oh, well, thank you. Uh, I'm run out of time, but I'll be around if you want to ask some questions. <laughs>